What's going on internet? IG back again today and we are continuing our top collections for this uh, holiday season and uh, today we're going to be looking at my top picks for apps. Again, this list is very personalized to me. Uh, so your picks are going to vary. These are the ones that I've either found this year or that I've spent an awful lot of time using this year. And um, I've tried to make these as cross-platform as possible. Because if we're honest, we all are using a bunch of different operating systems on a bunch of different machines in a lot of different contexts. And wherever you can get the same app on all of those, the easier your life seems. At the same time, I do want to point out just how amazing some of these apps are. So, let me know, of course, down in the comments of what your top, let's say five, I've got more than five, but let's say five for the sake of brevity, what your top five apps have been uh, this year in the open source world, and, uh, and let me share mine with you. Okay, let's just get straight into it. So first up, uh, Simple Note. Simple Note is a really fantastic uh, note-taking tool. Now, I know if some of you are familiar with this, you might be rolling your head because it's an electron-based app. Um, but the people behind WordPress uh, have created a very simple note-taking tool. It just supports plain text and it also does support Markdown as well. Um, but honestly, the, the beauty of this app is its simplicity. So whether you're uh, on Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever, um, you can find a client for Simple Note and you can uh, sync and download all of your notes. Uh, you can tag them, you can have uh, Markdown support um, and all of this stuff runs flawlessly uh, and I've never had syncing issues or anything like that. Um, it's free and a lot of the, um, the, the licensing for it uh, is, is open source. You can check out the, uh, the GitHub page for, uh, for what they're working on there and their future development. Um, but Simple Note is a really big recommendation of mine. It honestly, it runs a lot. Of, uh, of the scripts for this channel uh, and for all kinds of other bits and pieces of information that I come across along the way. Now, if Simple Note is not going to be sufficient for you and you need like Web Clipper and images and attachments to all be filed into a very big bulky notebook, if you are looking for a replacement for Evernote, then this might be the one for you. And I'm still experimenting with it, so I don't have a bunch of knowledge to share, but it was a pick that I found this year and I'm so glad I did. Uh, this is the replacement that you could have that is open source, it runs on everything, and it has basically all the features that you could possibly want or need, and that is Joplin. Joplin Notes, uh, a fantastic uh, drop-in replacement for something like OneNote or Evernote. In fact, it actually has uh, Evernote import capability. Um, again, markdown support for the formatting, but you can also do things like uh, you've got a web clipper available for Firefox and Chrome, you've got apps, um, you can synchronize all of your notebooks and notes with this thing using a cloud provider of your choice or even your own self-hosted cloud like Nextcloud, OwnCloud, that kind of thing. So that is a huge boon for those who are looking for uh, privacy and are looking to be able to host their own notes and know that they belong to them and they're not sitting on someone else's server somewhere. So Joplin is a major, uh, huge find for me this year and I will update you sometime in the future about this app more in depth uh, as time goes on and we'll see whether it can, uh, whether it can re fully replace OneNote for me. Okay, now the next one is pretty doggone obvious, obviously, but it's going to be worth mentioning any, mentioning anyway because its recent releases just keep getting better and better, and that is LibreOffice. I don't really need to introduce it much. If you uh, if you need an Office suite, if you've got to do spreadsheets and Word documents and all of that fun stuff, go and get yourself LibreOffice. Even some of the PDF editing capabilities have really saved my butt this year with LibreOffice Draw. So if you're uh, looking to do some stuff with PDFs, then LibreOffice Draw is going to be the one for you. Um, and honestly, I'm just uh, I'm super grateful for this project. It's uh, it's just one one of the mainstays of open source across uh, platforms everywhere. So yep, LibreOffice. That's all I really need to say about that. The next one is also one that's well known amongst the open source community. GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program. Uh, it runs, it does all of the thumbnails for this channel and it does a lot of other stuff outside of this channel uh, project. And uh, honestly, I've never paid for Photoshop and I don't really plan on doing because GIMP is what I've learned and what I've grown accustomed to. So 
again, transitioning over can be difficult, but um, but even the, the more polished releases of GIMP 2.10 um, uh, are pretty amazing in my opinion. And support for hardware and stuff just keeps rolling in and it's great to see. So definitely go and check out GIMP and uh, I don't know, do your best if, uh, if you're already on board with Photoshop to transition over and you could save yourself some good cash. Okay, now let's talk music management. So uh, there's two picks here because it uh, depends what, what uh, operating system I'm on. If I'm on Linux, um, I really love Lollipop. Lollipop is uh, fantastic for large music collections. My music collection wouldn't be huge by internet standards, um, but it is, it is decent. It's a decent chunk. It's about 40 gig. And, um, and Lollipop just seems to be able to manage this really well in a way that makes sense to my brain. Now, the other pick that I have for you is, uh, is would have been Clementine, but Clementine has been a bit stagnant in terms of its development. And so the, what I will recommend to you is to go and check out Strawberry, Strawberry Music Player. Uh, which is basically a fork of Clementine, but it's brought up to date. It, it's still being actively developed on it. It had a release this year and uh, and basically it just brings the development libraries and a lot of the tools and a lot of the plugins up to scratch with what's going on in the music world right now. So it can synchronize in. Uh, you can log in a lot of uh, web music services, uh, Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, all that kind of stuff can natively play from this app. And, uh, and honestly, it just has some really robust library management tools when it comes to uh, looking for album artwork, when it comes to plugging in, um, uh, plugging in different uh, sound generators, all kinds of fun stuff uh, can be accomplished with Strawberry. Um, it's based on a very rich heritage from Clementine. So if you're looking for a more up-to-date release, then definitely check out Strawberry Music Player. Okay, now let's talk video very specifically because obviously this takes up a large proportion of what I do in Linux and honestly, I hand on heart, I much prefer dealing with video on Linux than on other platforms. Duh. Now, I realize that there are other people and other people who I've interacted with in this space who, you know, say that video editing on Linux is a pain in the butt and, uh, you know, they'd rather use a Mac or Windows and uh, use Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. And, and I'm, I'm experimenting with those options as well because honestly, my video editing needs are pretty simple. Um, there's not a whole lot that goes into, in terms of post-production, fancy effects and that kind of thing. What I require of a video editor is speed, simplicity, because I don't have a lot of time to manage this channel, um, and uh, quick render times and great compatibility with file formats. And I get all of those things in Caden Live. Uh, and if Caden Live isn't working for me, which honestly it's worked great this year, even on Windows, even on Windows, Caden Live has been really stable for me. And again, I guess it's because I'm not doing very complicated projects, but Caden Live is amazing. If you're not using Caden Live on Linux and you want to do video stuff, what are you doing? Don't bother um, buying Premiere or anything like that. Go try out Caden Live and see what you think. And then if it's still not complicated enough, DaVinci Resolve is there, but obviously that's not open source. So hence it's not on the list. But also I've seen and heard very good things about OpenShot and ShotCut, uh, both being based on the MLT uh, framework. And so they're very similar to Caden Live and you can, in, um, you can achieve some very cool wizardry if you have an Nvidia graphics card, if you kind of cross match some of the MLT frameworks between these apps. Um, and you can uh, and you can achieve an Nvidia encoder uh, library. So I'll, if I remember, I'll try and chuck a link in the description about how to achieve that. But that's just a very quick side note. Something cool that you can do between these video editors. Okay, moving on. Finally, let's talk email because we I still deal with email an awful lot. The best email client that I can find on the Linux desktop. It doesn't have an app for mobile. Um, it doesn't synchronize across. Uh, desktops, but the one app that I have kept coming back to on the desktop, whether it's Mac, Windows or Linux, is MailSpring. Now, here's a caveat. Everything on this list has been GPL open sourced as best as I can tell. This one is and it isn't. Uh, first of all, MailSpring, the, the client itself, the interface that you're dealing with is open source. Uh, it's licensed under GPL. You can go check it out on GitHub. The bit that isn't is the mail synchronization engine. The, the core, the, I guess the, the engine that runs this mail app is not open source. And 
so take it for what you will. Um, but the thing that this gives me that everything else doesn't is Office 365 support, Exchange support, IMAP support, all of the different mail clients that I possibly deal with in work and personal and everywhere else work flawlessly inside MailSpring. Uh, it has really intelligent scheduling features. It has a bunch of other features you can get for a pro subscription. Uh, so if you're into that, go check it out. But the free um, available everywhere version of MailSpring is, uh, to me, has been a huge boon of productivity and the best desktop email client I can find. Uh, on the internet in 2018. Finally, two web browsers to top it off today. Firefox, because it's been around forever and it just keeps getting better. And the second one is Brave, because it strips the internet of all the annoying garbage that we wish wasn't there and, uh, and gives you a really lean, mean, fast browsing experience. All right, well, those are my picks for the, uh, for the best open source apps of this year that I've either used a heap or found for the first time this year. I hope this list was helpful for you. Let me know your top five in the list below. So let me know what you think. I will see you all in the very next video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays, stay safe, and I will see you next time.